Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, what I am going to talk to you about is hair, and more specifically, hair in a digital art sense, and how I do mine and how I find it easiest. So, you can see in front, I have a load of uh, colors which I am going to use for this tutorial. Um, and these colors range, obviously, as you can see, dark on the right, and very light on the left. Um, generally for this, you use the darkest color as your base color, and you go up the scale, or down the scale, depending on how you've written it out, um, with the darkest one being a more bulky color, and it's getting less and less and less as uh, it goes on. So, what we're gonna do, if we go into our color palette, I am using uh, Critter, uh, which is an open source software. Absolutely amazing program. Guys do really good stuff with it. Um, and you pick which other array of colors uh, you want to use. I preferably like using uh, this part over than picking colors from here. You probably could, but I like using here just because you can see how it blends and it goes around. So what we could do, uh, what color have I got? Uh, I can go red into yellow, that would probably be all right. So it shows you there, which color you got. Click OK, uh, I'm with you, that. So that's gonna be my base color. Move up a little bit, you can see how it fits together. Go okay, next one. These are actually quite disgusting colours. <laughs> Sorry. Next one. Like that. And next one. And you can use as many colours as you want. Uh, I generally use about four or five, depending on what it is. There you go. There's some some colours to use. So. Now we are going to create a circle, I think, for this. And we'll change it to black. Um, shoot that down a bit. So we're going to have a little circle here, which is awesome. And go to our pen tool. And we're going to pick one of these. I will go with... Uh, I'll, go with I'll go with this one here. Um, yeah, we're going to go with this one. So, if you go up to where your, your brushes are. And scroll down. The one I preferably like to use is this one here. Uh, just because it has a more of a hair sort of texture. I know people create their own to make their own hair texture, which is amazing. Um, but this is one I preferably like to use. So we're going to here, pick out your brush, and we'll go to our color palette. And this is why I, I like to scribble it out before I do the hair. It's just so I know what colors I'm gonna use. I can just use the pipette and I can click on it like so. That now gives me the color I'm wanting. I'm go back in that to my pen, shrink that down a bit. And you can now see how fair it is. Just circle it in like that. And we're just doing soft and light strokes where we want it darkest, so we'll push it in. So mostly for this, we want to block out the black. I suppose I probably should have used uh, the purple color to allow it all blend in properly, but the joys of art, I suppose. So what we're gonna do up here, we're gonna give it a little tuft, just, just because, you know, why not? Just a tuft, tuft of hair, which is always good. And he sort of has that hairy shape already. So I'm going to go to our pipette then. So we're going to use our next color, which is the one above, which is that one there. We go back to our brush. Now you can keep it either on the same 
size or you can shrink it down. I think I'm going to shrink it down only a tad. Just there. And then we're just going to use some soft brush strokes. And don't forget about direction. Which way the hair flows. That's probably one of the bigger things. So I've got a, a circle which I'm using. And I'm just going like half, half moon shape shall we say. Just softly blending it in. Not pressing hard. The first couple of colours I generally like to just go all over again. Just because these are what I would call like a base hair sort of thing. Like so. A few little tufts poking out here and there. Yeah, and then we'll go on to the next one, which is this one here. And we'll go up into this one here. And we'll just, once again, we've got a lighter side. Just moving it around like so. You always got to have this little point of where the hair roughly sort of splits like a parting in a sense. So my hair's coming from there. Just move it around. A few little tufts. Like so. Yeah, I'm happy with that. We're going into our next colour, which is this one here. It's a little bit of a darker blue colour. I'm going to actually increase this a tad. Give it some nice blue highlights. Look at that. Just putting it around. Never trying to forget the the shape of whatever it is you're giving hair to and how it flows. Now at this point you don't really want to put loads uh, of hair into it. You want to keep some of that base purple sort of showing through. And then we'll go to our next colour and our final colour which is this light one here. And we're going to increase it a tad bit more. But say it's all personal preference, whether you want to keep it small or you keep it large. You know, whichever one you feel is getting you that uh, hair effect. You see there, just keeping that, keeping that base where the tuft of hair is. Like so. I'm going to keep one side a bit more darker than the other just because that's going to be my light source so we've got this so now what do you do well you come back up to your brush and you want a thin brush um, preferably if you're using uh, something that is pressured like a tablet or something like that uh, anyways, I use this one here which is the uh, standard one for, for Critter it comes with the program now I'll shrink that down a bit. So we're going to work backwards now. So we've got all our base colours in. We're going to hit this darker colour here. Go back to our brush. I'm just going to give it a few little strands of hair. And you might not be able to tell how like some of the hairs are going in, but they are. You'll see. In, especially in the lighter parts with this darker colour you'll see it just slightly change Give it a few strands poking out there and so you're not pressing hard you just want some feathered touching 
do it nice and gentle. That's it. When you're happy with the amount of hair, then we go to the next one, which is this blue here. Uh, purple, sorry. And then we just skim that around. Like so. Giving it that furball sort of effect. I suppose in a sense it's giving it direction. And that's one of the main things of hair is direction. So we're going to come down to this next one, which is here. That one there. See these these strands you can start seeing a bit more a bit more poking in. Always when you're doing the thin strands, try and follow the lines of the hair as well. That will always help give it a more realistic hair sort of look. So if the hair curves like it does here, you want a curve stroke. Okay. Then as it gets up to the top, you want to flick it up a little bit. So there you go, it's looking a little bit more furry. So we're going to our next colour here, which is this last dark one. Which this is probably the one you're going to see more of the colour uh, of the hair. Especially in strands. Just skim it through, just like that. Just like that. And there you go. Give it a little zoom in here. So that's what it looks like. And just put a few more little strands in there. However you want it to look. There you go. There you go. Now this is the way I do it. Um, obviously there's, there's many people out there that do it uh, differently. But this is the way I learn, basically. Uh, it's the way I still do it. I've been doing it this way for a lot of my work. Uh, and it works really well. So, if you have any questions, anything at all, or even if you just want uh, little colour palettes just like these here, I am more than happy to, to get these pictures to you. All the best, take care, and happy doodling.